Have you ever ever heard in the history of hip hop a man that gives away his creativity and helps make billboard hits but doesn't get paid a dollar for it, one credit for it, and here stuck in the hood? You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense. But exposing these niggas will make sense. Fuck you, bitch ass niggas. This is on. Oliver is a fucking snake ass nigga, double headed snake ass nigga, psychotic looking motherfucker ass nigga. Always stirring the pot, telling me you're on. I want to be at the music video shoot, but Drake didn't want me to come. All Drake's friends hate you. Drake doesn't like you. You're always stirring the pot, you bitch ass. We'll check it up and check it out because man, are y'all telling me Drake is the milli vanilli of rap in this motherfucker? Now, I think everybody could agree, right? Drake got more goddamn either ghostwriters, writers, or what he calls help than a motherfucking Nike sweatshop in the heart of China. Come on, let's be honest, all right? Now, there's a big thing where he doesn't use ghostwriters, he credits them all. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? We heard another nigga singing the rhymes that you eventually recorded. We know what's up. Now, here's the thing. We got another guy. A guy who Drake recently shouted out on All Summer 16 looking for revenge. Okay. Basically, one of the guys he shouted out, Mo G with the dance moves. He says, fuck that. I'm calling people out. Now, he didn't call out Drake specifically, but he's calling out people around Drake. And so, it really, he's really calling out Drake because Drake is the brand and people around Drake, obviously, are Drake. Now, he calls out Drake's manager for being a fuck nigga. He says Drake, Drake's manager, Oliver, and if you don't know who he is, he has some weird last name, Oliver, and some other guy named Future the Prince, which is Drake's DJ. They manage Drake. He calls out the manager for not putting him or trying to keep him away from positions or places. For example, Drake shooting a music video with Rihanna. He don't want Mo G there for whatever reason, right? Now, he also calls out the camp, really, to say, yo, I helped with the creative process for certain songs that became hits. I helped with this. I helped with that. And basically, I don't get no credit and I don't get no money, okay? Now, my thing is this, right? And I fuck with Drake. I'm going to like his music regardless. Listen, even after the ghostwriting allegations, if it's hot, it's hot. I, I mean, I won't rate him as an MC because I don't know what he's writing and what he's not. But I could always fuck with good music. Now, the question becomes this. When are we, the fans, going to look towards Drake and actually hold him to the fire that he got to answer some question? Answer some question, motherfucker. You got to answer some questions because we have rated you or some fans did at one point in time to be like one of the best lyricists in the game at when you want to be. But now if you're using a Ghost Rider, you're kind of like disqualified. It's like steroids. Now, Drake has never answered any questions. Let's be honest, right? He got called out with uh, Quint Miller. He basically went and fader and he said, uh, listen, man, here, here's the truth. To be honest, use your own imagination. I ain't telling you shit. I don't got to tell you shit. Use your mind. Whatever you think, go with that. Now, the audacity of this guy, he can't even answer fucking simple questions. He can't even just say, hey, listen, this is what I do. This is how I did it. Yeah, that's, yeah, I am using Ghost Riders. But he doesn't even want to answer the question. So with this guy, and this guy's name is Moji, he ain't going to answer no Moji. He's not going to speak up on this type of shit. He don't do interviews. He's singing about just bitches and simping and shit like that and beefing with Meek. So he definitely don't got no damn time to be talking about no Ghost Riders. But it is very interesting to analyze, right? We had one guy who claims he helped write the probably one of the only rap albums that went platinum last year. If you're reading it, it's too late. And he only got 5000 a month, right? That's what he got paid. We got another guy who says he's been contributing to hits. And all he got is basically nothing. Shout outs on Instagram and a couple of plays on OVO Radio. He ain't getting no money. He ain't getting no contracts. Ain't nothing. Right? So it kind of leads me to believe like, yo, damn. Drake got some real like slave ship, like sweatshop mentality going on around here. Unless he's going to really answer the question and defend himself. Because it doesn't look too good. Now, Let's go back in because I know a lot of people are going to be like, yo, these people are not Ghost Riders. We had everybody credited. We had Quentin. He was credited. Party Next Door, he was credited. We had The Weeknd credited. But think about this, right? And we saw how The Weeknd career went after he didn't sign with OVO. We then have to bring up this one particular point in theory that keeps coming up time and time again. Would Bryson Tiller be popping right now had he signed an OVO? Would The Weeknd be the number one pop star in the world? If he signed to OVO, would he? Will Party Next Door actually make it? And I'm fucking with Party Next Door. He got a new song called Come and See Me. That's just dope. I really like it. But will he actually live up to the potential being under the shadow of OVO? OVO is Drake. 
OVO ain't no fucking label. It's like a label for Drake. It's not like a label. You know how like MMG's like, yeah, it's Rick Ross, but MMG's just as much uh, Meek Mill and Wale and the other guys. No, OVO is like just Drake. There ain't no like for number two. There ain't no Tony Yayo in like uh, fucking OVO. There's just Drake. Everybody else is like assistants and writers. So what do you guys think? Because now you got to then think about it like, damn. Maybe, and, and this is the most fucked up thing about it. If you're an artist coming up, right, and you got the hottest nigga in the game tapping you for some records or for some ideas or for some flows or something like that, you would think he would have the ability to put you on the furthest or the best or the easiest, whatever you want to say. But instead, it's probably the biggest hindrance because if you fuck with him, you definitely not blowing up. He not paying you. He not giving you no fucking shine. He going to give you a fucking shout out on Instagram. And the crazy thing about it, like now that this guy Moji has spoken out about it and I'm not defending him, but I'm telling you what's going to happen. Fans are going to attack his ass because they're going to be like, you're so ungrateful. Drake did all this shit for you. And this is how you repay him by over here snitching and blah, blah. That's what it is, okay? So you guys get in the comment box. I fuck with Drake regardless. He's my favorite rapper, but I don't like fuckery from nobody, all right? And uh, this guy's making some serious allegations, right? And, of course, we know his manager ain't gonna respond. We know Drake ain't gonna respond. So it's up to us, the fans, to discuss it and then discuss if it's really anything that we should hold Drake to the fire for if he eventually does decide to speak at all. It's your boy Jackie Dems getting comments. Make sure you guys like. Definitely subscribe. Come on.